Hello, my name is Briella Bear Chen. I am a doctoral student at the University of Maryland College Park and a student member of DADD. Today, I'll be talking about how to use video modeling and video prompting to teach your students with disabilities. First, I'll go over the evidence base for video-based intervention. Then I'll be showing you a short video clip example, and then we'll go through the steps so you can create a video modeling or prompting intervention of your own. So to get started, what is video modeling and video prompting? So they both fall under the umbrella of video-based intervention, which is an evidence-based practice. Video-based intervention uses explicit instruction, usually through the form of a task analysis, to break down a task into small discrete steps to be completed one at a time. These steps are then modeled and video recorded and presented to the student on an electronic device. So usually something portable like a tablet, a laptop, a smartphone, something like that. The basic difference between a video modeling intervention and a video prompting intervention is that a video modeling uh, shows the entire, all the steps of the task at once, just like one continuous video. And the video prompting has a pause between each step. So the student would watch a step, they would pause the video, complete the step they just saw, then play the video, watch the next step, so on. Uh, both of them are effective for students with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So it ultimately depends on which do you think would be more effective for the student you have in mind. So if it's a student that struggles to remember the steps of a task, video prompting might be more effective for them because that way they can do it one step at a time. Um, also, if it's just a task that has a lot of steps and is complicated, video prompting might be a better way to go. You can also start with video prompting, uh, and then over time, once your student starts to get the hang of it, move to video modeling by chunking those steps together into that one long continuous video. So the idea behind video modeling and video prompting is that um, it's helpful with executive functioning skills. So attention, planning, memory, so students that have challenges with those skills tend to really benefit from video-based uh, intervention. Uh, it helps to focus one's attention on the most salient features of the task um, and cut out any unnecessary distractions, which can be really helpful for our students with autism spectrum disorder who may have uh, sensory sensitivities and are easily distracted by outside stimuli. It's also great in building independence because students can often self-prompt through uh, the videos and so they need um, less instructor supervision and less uh, live modeling, live prompting, things like that. The advantages, uh, first, is that video modeling and video prompting are portable uh, if it's uploaded to a portable device. So that way students can take uh, any of the videos that you make to naturalistic settings. So they can take it to the grocery store, uh, to their home, to work, to really anywhere to practice these skills. It's also individualizable, meaning that you can create a video specifically for any student you have in mind. So maybe the way that you model a, a task or how you break a task into steps differs from one student to another. And with video-based intervention, you can make it specifically for any one student. So it helps to actually watch uh, an example rather than have me talking about it. So I'm gonna show you uh, a quick example of a video prompting clip that I made um, to teach someone how to do laundry. So here it is. Let's wash some clothes. Put your dirty clothes in the washer. Close the washer. Get the detergent and measuring cup from the shelf. Fill the cup to the line with detergent. Open the detergent compartment. Pour the detergent in the compartment. Close the detergent compartment. Rinse the measuring cup with water. Put the measuring cup and detergent away.
Turn on the washer. Turn the dial to normal. Press and hold the start button. Good job, you're all done. So that was an example of a video prompting intervention. Just as a reminder, uh, the only difference between that and a video modeling intervention would be to remove those pauses in between the steps. I also want to note that typically with those pauses, you would want them a little bit longer to give your student a chance to pause the video and complete the step. I just made them about one second long because I know you're watching this on the internet and you don't need to see those pauses. So just something to keep in mind. So now we're going to go over the steps to creating your own video modeling or video prompting intervention. So the first step would be to choose a task. Um, luckily, with video-based intervention, the sky's the limit. There have been uh, studies that have shown that video-based intervention is effective in teaching a variety of skills like academic skills, vocational skills, social skills, daily living skills, safety skills, and community skills. So these really range the gamut. Once you have chosen a task, then you want to make a task analysis. So if this isn't something you're familiar with doing, there is a task analysis video on the DADD YouTube page that you're watching this on right now. So I would say to go really check that out if you're not familiar with task analyses. But basically it is just those step-by-step -step instructions that you heard in the video. So this was the example um, from the uh, washing clothes example you just saw. So when you're creating these, sometimes it helps to have someone go through the steps of the task and have you watch to like write down these steps or to do it yourself. Because as it was, I wrote a task analysis and then made that video and realized I had forgotten steps on my task analysis, like closing the washer door. So sometimes that helps. Uh, this is also a chance to individualize uh, for your student, like I was talking about. So say you have a student that this is too many steps and you could really chunk it together. They don't need them spaced out that much and that's perfect. Um, maybe you have a student that say that first step of open the washer and put in your dirty clothes is just too much at once and you want to split that up into two steps. That's also fine. So this is a great way to individualize this for your student. Next, you want to consider the setting and the materials that you'll need to film. So when you're filming your modeling. Um, ideally, you want to do this in the setting where the student will perform the skill just to help with that generalization. You also want to be using um, the types of materials that they'll be using. Um, and part of that is to help with generalization, but just from a practical standpoint. So say I gave a student that video or the video you just saw, the clothes washing, and their washer didn't operate the same way that mine does, that would just be confusing. So then you want to decide how you want to format your video modeling or video prompting intervention. So one of the things to consider would be doing it from a first or a third person perspective. So that clothes washing video you just saw was first person perspective. You could also do third, which um, you would need a friend or a colleague or maybe a tripod to film your whole body um, doing a certain skill. And so sometimes that depends on the task, which you think is more appropriate. Uh, also decide whether you want to do it with narration or without. So the video you saw, the example, there was a narration of those task analysis steps read aloud. Um, based on the research, narration is effective, or the videos are effective with and without narration. It really um, depends on the student. Some students really appreciate having that verbal prompting embedded in the video. Other students find it distracting. So that just kind of depends on your student that you're making it for. And then think about what kind of device you want to record it on. So um, I'm a big fan of everyday technology, something you already have. So like I made this on my phone. So once you have all of this in mind and you have a plan, you can go ahead and film your video based intervention. Uh, some things to keep in mind is that you want to limit any kind of other distractions going on in the video. So any kind of background noise or um, making sure that when you're filming it that you're only really focusing on the steps to the task and there isn't a lot of um, things going on in the background or things included that don't need to be. Um, you can also film um, your video all at once and just use that or you can film it in clips and later edit it together. 
and that brings me to my next step is editing your video modeling or video prompting clip. Um, you don't have to, you could totally just shoot one entire video of um, you modeling the steps of the task, maybe even recording your voiceover narration live. I personally find that that's difficult to do. Um, so the way that I would recommend is to film your steps of the task like one at a time and then use like free editing software such as like iMovie or Viva Video to then put all of those clips together and add a voiceover narration. So here's a screenshot. I use Viva Video um, because it's free. Um, it's a great app and I like it because as you can see at the bottom, this was one that I had made for um, a dishwashing task. And so I added in pauses myself, like I just recorded a blank spot for three seconds and added in that pause. And that's how I created the pauses for the video prompting. I also went through and muted the original audio. So any of the background noise was cut out. And then straight on this app here, if you go to the tab there that says music, you can record your own voiceover narration right in the app. And then that creates um, your video prompting clip. So once you've created it, you can go ahead and start to implement it with your students. So first you need to upload it to your student's device. And so that could be a tablet, a smartphone, a laptop, something like that. Then you wanna teach them how to use it. I have found that most students are so tech savvy these days, they usually don't need very much help at all, but showing them uh, where it's located on the device, how to play it, how to rewind it if they need to see a step again, how to pause it, just to make sure that they can self-prompt through it. Use error correction as needed. Um, sometimes just telling the student to watch the video prompt again or watch the video model again is enough. Um, other times, maybe the way that it's filmed is just not helping. And so you can step in with some least to most prompting, maybe show them some live modeling, use hand over hand, um, because if they're watching it over and over again and repeatedly getting steps wrong, then that's just going to make them frustrated. So making sure to step in when it's necessary. And then over time, um, although video based intervention is portable and can be taken anywhere and then be a support, however long the student needs to, ultimately, we don't want to have them uh, reliant on it. So you can, if you're using video prompting, for example, you can start to chunk steps or fade over time. Um, I have found that a lot of students just do this themselves naturally, that after they start to get the hang of the task, they'll, you know, skim over multiple steps that they know how to do and then play a step that they're like, oh, this, this part always trips me up and they'll just watch that one step and then pause it and then can, like complete the entire task. Um, and then lastly, you want to plan for opportunities for generalization. So we ultimately want our students to be able to perform these uh, skills and tasks in the settings that they um, would perform them in. So if they're learning these skills at school, to be able to then plan for opportunities for them to perform it in the community or at home or in those situations um, where they're most likely to perform them in. So that is all I have for today, but if you would like to see some additional resources, uh, these are three great articles in Teaching Exceptional Children that go through the steps of creating, uh, the first one is video prompting, and, uh, video prompting and audio prompting interventions. The second is uh, mobile technology, and the third is video-based instruction. Uh, those are all really great resources. Um, otherwise, if you would like to email me, my email is at the bottom there, bbear at umd.edu. And uh, that's it. Thank you for listening.